What is going on guys? It's Sook and I am back with a brand new video on Super Duper Tech. And in today's video, I'll be bringing you my full and in-depth review of the 2017 15 inch MacBook Pro. So without any further ado, let's hit the titles. So the first thing that I do want to get into talking about is the display on the 15 inch MacBook Pro. Now it does have a resolution of 2880 by 1800, which gives it approximately 220 pixels per inch. Now while there are a number of different Windows laptops out there that have a much higher resolution closer to 4K, the display on the 15 inch MacBook Pro is definitely not a slouch, especially when you pair that with the wider P3 color gamut. So if you are looking to do some photo editing with your MacBook Pro, you will easily be able to do so as it is capable of displaying a number of different colors. Also, the brightness of the display on the MacBook Pro is capable of reaching 500 nits. Now, as you can see in my testing, I was averaging at around 315 lux. Now, with such a bright display, you will probably be worrying about backlight bleed, but you will also be pleased to find out that the bleed on the MacBook Pro is very minimal and it's only around the top edge that you will see some. And in terms of ports and connectivity, with the 2017 MacBook Pro, you'll only be getting USB-C as we saw with the 2016 model. This does mean that if you are looking to connect up other peripherals, you will have to change them over to USB-C cables or you will have to get adapters and dongles. Also with all models of the 15 inch MacBook Pro, you will be getting a dedicated GPU. Now this starts off at either the Radeon Pro 555 with two gigabytes of memory, or you can get one with a Radeon 560 with four gigabytes of memory. And to test how well these GPUs perform in the 15 inch MacBook Pro, I did run a number of different games on the MacBook Pro. Now, if you do want to see that video, then you can click the card in the top right hand corner, or you can find the links down below in the description. I did also run a number of different benchmarking tests on the 15 inch MacBook Pro. Now, if you guys do want to see the results and that video, then be sure to click on the card in the top right hand corner. And once again, links can be found down below in the description. But when compared to the previous 2016 model, I saw approximately 20% increase across the board. However, where I did see some major improvements was in the space of video export. Now with the 2016 MacBook Pro, exporting a five minute, 23 second video file took approximately five minutes, 18 seconds. Whereas with the 2017 model, it took approximately two minutes, 42 seconds. So if you guys do want to compare the results that I got with the 2017 MacBook Pro and compare it to the 2016 one, then of course, once again, I will leave a card in the top right hand corner and links can also be found down below. Another area of the MacBook Pro that I was hoping to see an improvement on was of course the FaceTime camera, which is still locked at 720p. And talking about FaceTime, when you are making phone calls on the MacBook Pro, You'll be pleased to find out that the microphones are very good to the point that anyone that you are having a conversation with can easily distinguish your words. Something that I really enjoyed about the 2016 model is that the audio quality that was being produced from it was top notch. Now that feature is also being carried over to this 2017 model. You can take it. They try to disrespect me when they're online, especially. But everything cool when they check me because I'm so cool and deadly. See, I had to realize slowly that nobody actually knows me. Yeah, man, I got 15 different iPhones, but I am so not phony. They try to disrespect me when they're online, especially. Admittedly, when typing on your 15 inch MacBook Pro for the first time, it will feel slightly weird. And this is as you will have to get used to the second generation butterfly mechanism that Apple are using. But after a week or so of using it, you'll easily get used to how the keyboard feels. And it's very clicky and it has a satisfying feel when you are tapping away at these buttons. Now, when the 2016 MacBook Pro model came out, the trackpad was very large. Now this did take me by surprise, 
but after using it and using it for a few months now it's felt very fine and you'll expect the same when using the new 2017 model now after almost a year of using the 2016 macbook pro using the touch bar is still quite a novelty for myself though it is nice to have it as you can easily switch between tabs i still find that the average keyboard shortcut is more than sufficient and though there are a lot of pro applications such as final cut pro and logic i still find that your normal keyboard shortcuts once again are a lot more fast now though it sounds like i'm hating on the touch bar i'm actually not i do find that a lot of its features are quite functional and in general i do have positive things to say about it but i am going to keep it real with you guys as about seven times out of ten all of the shortcuts that you could do on your keyboard can still be achieved faster on the touch bar it just comes down to using it a lot more often so that your brain automatically knows where each different function is now just to the right of the touch bar you'll find the power button and embedded in this power button is the touch id sensor which makes logging back into your macbook pro a lot easier and a lot faster especially if you've got a ridiculously large password now one thing that remains to be a top selling point on the macbook pro is its battery life and with this macbook pro i was getting an average battery life of around seven and a half hours another factor which i do want to mention is that when performing a number of different stress tests and benchmarks at the same time the macbook pro topped off at around 40 degrees on its chassis depending on who you ask 40 degrees might not sound like an awful lot but when you do have your hand over it you can definitely feel the heat radiate off it so before i end this review i do want to mention some final points now when the 2016 macbook pro was released it was met with a lot of controversy as to the fact that apple went with just usb-c and as time has gone on i've noticed a steady increase in the amount of usb-c peripherals available along with a drop in their price and if you do purchase this macbook pro then i do want to mention that the screen is absolutely gorgeous the keyboard is amazing to type on the trackpad is one of the best in the industry and the power and performance of this machine is now starting to rival that of my desktop iMac and i think the main thing that's keeping me from using this as my desktop is the fact that i love the gorgeous screen on my 2015 5k iMac so of course if you guys are looking to purchase this new 15 inch macbook pro and of course you've got the money for it then go ahead i'm telling you now you will not be disappointed with its performance now if you have got the 2016 model then do not upgrade as this is of course an incremental update and you won't see much of your money being well used now this is just a hint i would in fact spend my money elsewhere especially when macOS high sierra is released as apple will start to support external gpus so then guys that has been it for today's video i do hope you did enjoy it if you did enjoy it then be sure to hit that like button and if you want you around here then why not subscribe also why don't you go ahead and add me and follow me on my social media as you'll be seeing what videos i'm working on now along with behind the scenes footage thank you guys very much for watching and i'll see you guys next time have a good one